Yeah, how's that? I can talk. All right. All righty. Hello. Good morning. My name is Jim Flack. Um, as the title states, I'm here to talk about DIY do-it-yourself green energy. It's a small-scale uh, solar project that I began uh, in my backyard. Uh, so the purpose is to describe to you all uh, about my non-grid tie uh, solar recharging station. This to be used for night lighting. That's the uh, the total scope of the project is nothing at this point. It's nothing more than uh, uh, having deck lighting so I can see to get in my house when I come back to the pubs at night. My background is in uh, HVAC uh, systems experience. I'm currently an electrical engineer and I do uh, RF antenna design for Philips. And uh, what really got me started in this whole green energy thing was uh, I attended a, a seminar about five years ago now through sponsored by Green, uh, green Energy Ohio uh, on a solar panel workshop where we actually installed solar panels on a local architect firm. Uh, and my, my philosophy for this project is uh, just build it instead of just talking about it. Because I've been talking about this for like many years and all the, the nuances and idios, uh, intricacies that I could do uh, the, the details, I get killed in the details, so I said, let's just build something. And I didn't really design this from the front end. It's more designed through uh, experimentation. So at this point, it's really just a kind of a kludge from a design perspective. So, but the, spe the, the rough specifications are, uh, I've got 120 watt uh, uh, solar panel. It's a, po it's a polycrystalline panel. I've got a nominal voltage of 12 volts, and I provide about 10 amps of current. Um, the estimated cost at this point with just the bulk hardware, the solar panel, the batteries, and the charge controller, and some of the copper to get uh, from point A to point, a, point B is about $600. So it's a little bit pricey for just a simple deck lighting experiment, but it's fun, so I do it. Um, so this is basically the system overview. I've got the panel. Uh, the charge controller in series with it, and that delivers the power to the battery. Uh, and then I have, a f of course, a fuse uh, in series to the load. And the, the, right now, the load is just uh, some um, assortment of uh, LED bulbs and a fan, a computer fan. So uh, how do I begin this project? I begin with the mechanical mounting. That's the first and most important part of uh, any kind of solar design project. Um, what, uh, what I was able to do, my neighbor, uh, and kind of keep in, the keeping with the spirit of this do-it-yourself theme was that I wanted to kind of harvest everything as local as possible, other than just the solar panel. I couldn't harvest that uh, locally unless I stole it off of a sign on 71. But uh, I ordered that from, uh, from Arizona and a charge controller from Arizona as well. But the fabrication for the structure was fabricated down at a shop on 55th by my friend. Uh, and that design is actually the, the design of the, the, of the structure, the frame, is actually the coolest part about it. Because what he did is he took, um, he took all the wood and, he, and he, he, he centered it right in the, the without any like, high-tech tools, he just centered it right in the middle. So the center of gravity, actually, it translates, all the, all the weight is translated to the deck down there. So it's, it's a beautiful design uh, using just refab, ref, uh, recycled or reclaimed uh, metal. And it's an it's a ca a aluminum cast uh, frame. It's two foot by four foot, um, so no rusting to occur there. And it's, it's, it's mounted with one Allen bolt, so it's really easy to, to take off. Subsequently, because it's so easy to remove, and because I live in a uh, Slavic village, I had to put a chain around it. So now I have a big chain link ch uh, chain over it with a big lock. So, you know, because <laughs> you know silicon's in high demand right now. So, the world, uh, worldwide. But I don't know if anybody really re realized that down there, but whatever. Uh, so, it's a fixed position and it's, a, it's at a 45 degree angle. It's about 20 feet off the ground. So, it's on a deck. 
It says there. And uh, it's facing the south. What I initially had it was I was facing it south. This is facing south in this picture here. But I, 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 I subsequently turned it to a southwest sky. Seems to get good results there. Uh, the powerhouse, uh, this is where the batteries are stored. And I wanted to keep something that would keep the uh, precipitation off of, uh, off of the electronics. So I went to uh, the local store down the street and got a, like a Tupperware bin. It's not flame rated or ISO approved, but it does the job for now just fine. And the cost was, it was within my budget. Uh, so uh, what, what, I, what I did there is I, I drilled a hole in the side just to vent hydrogen buildup when the batteries are charging. And uh, I have a fan in there. It's an induced draft fan. And I'm going to put a filter on the other side eventually uh, to, you know, just to keep, keep a nice constant airflow while the batteries are charging. Um, then the, the panel, uh, it's a Kyo, the, the manufacturer is a Kyocera. It's 120 watt. It's actually the title's Kyocera 120. It's a two foot by four foot module. And it's a polycrystalline silicon uh, type. And the, the life expectancy on it panel is 30 years. And that picture there is actually, it's, it's mounted to the, um, the frame. And the, the, the black box on the, right, on the right side there is the, uh, where, where the power is inputted or outputted. Um, I had a choice. I could go with a amorphous panel, which, which may be a better choice for Cleveland because of the, the more gray skies we have here. But I chose this polycrystalline panel based on my Green Energy Ohio experience. That was the panel that we installed um, on the architect firm. And it seemed, when you read all the reviews on the internet, it seemed to be that that panel, for the, for the price, it seemed to be, it delivered the most uh, you know, power and efficiency for, um, for the price. And it was a nice, compact, two foot by four foot design. So I. I said that's a good start in place. Then the charge controller, um, I just, I, I, could have, I could have designed this, but I, it's really, probably, it's really, actually a really simple circuit, but um, for $50, you can purchase a Sun Saver, a 10 amp, and just put it in, in line, and it, they guarantee it for 15 years. Um, and the point of the charge controller is just to maximize the battery lifetime. You don't necessarily need this component to make the solar system work, but uh, batteries are kind of finicky. I don't, I don't think, from what I've read on the, the reviews, bat no one really understands batteries for um, solar systems. I mean, they, they're really cantankerous as far as the climate they like. They like, they like a constant temperature, and they definitely don't like to be, uh, have power inputted to them in big, in, uh, big pulses. So with the charge controller, um, it, it limits that at a constant rate into the batteries. So it's, the idea is to keep the, to uh, extend the battery lifetime. Then the batteries, uh, from what these are, what I purchased was, a, was golf cart batteries, and they're six volt each, and they're what they're, there's a 228 amp hour rating. And um, the reason I purchased them was because from everything I was reading, was that these were the most durable batteries to use for this type of application, uh, be, based on the fact that they're good for deep cycle charging. They can run all the way down, and you can just pump, pump the power back into them, and they, they, they won't die, so, so to speak, so, so soon in their life. Um, they can handle that, that deep cycle charges. And I think golf carts also, the golf carts batteries uh, can handle that temperature swing that we probably are, we, we experience here in Cleveland. Um, and of course, the fuse. I put a, uh, I put a fuse in series with the batteries to the load. It's a 10 amp uh, barrel line. But the interesting point about this was that when I was putting this together, and this is this is definitely in tune with the DIY theme, uh, was that you can have when you're when you're doing this, when you're doing these solar circuits or solar applications, a lot of the uh, components that you purchase off uh, for DC. Uh, or 12 volt sick systems, or 24 volt systems are rated. Uh, the the um, standards have a higher quality than uh, nominal 120 volt systems. So subsequently, the cost for uh, components like 
breakers or disconnects is much higher than a standard um, uh, standard 120 volt system. So I didn't necessarily purchase a, f a, a fuse block uh, that was rated. I made my own, and what I did is I took a PVC holder from uh, like an electrical box uh, for outdoor wiring, and I took some two. Um, what you call sockets, light bulb sockets, like they're for um, like LED light bulb sockets from electronic surplus and in integrated those into this, this PD seal holder and put the fuse in there and that actually is a nice press fit and that actually works pretty well as a fuse. So it's really kind of really do it yourself but it, it does, it's functional. And I can make more of them as well because it, yeah, it's not a problem. But then I have a switch and currently I just did a, a regular single pole switch and I mounted it uh, in, in, a, in an outdoor environment with the PVC. Uh, but eventually I want to get to a photo cell and a motion sensor, which I haven't done that yet. That's, that's the plan. That's the future plan is to get, actually put a switch in series with that, you know, and then you would leave that one in circuit. And then you have the motion sensor and the, the photo cell in series with that, and that would just be your, that would be your active switch then. Uh, and the load, currently I have only a few of these type of handmade uh, LED uh, light bulbs, which I, I'm uh, positioning around the deck uh, to give lighting. So I maximize my lumen output by parallel LEDs. So, the, the, so even though the effective lumen output of each one is low, it's, you've, got, you've got a bank of them. It actually lights up the deck good when I come home at night. And uh, the future goals for this project is uh, eventually I want to get to uh, characterize the charging cycle of the batteries. And I want to design this low-power uh, low RF switch uh, for mo motion and photo sensing. And uh, I definitely want to improve the lighting fixtures. And I'd like to implement some type of GUI, uh, like a kiosk like that would tell you, like, uh, like it'd be an interactive type of uh, station, which would tell you exactly what the, the batteries are doing at the time. And it could, you could chart, uh, you could track actually the sun uh, daily and you know, log it and put it somewhere on some kind of database. But that's, that's that's at the rate it took me to do this project. That's probably going to take me like two years, but uh, maybe five. But uh, any questions? Uh, does anybody want to talk about RF receive antennas? Uh, that's actually what I'd rather talk about than. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free. Uh, the, the the solar panel itself cost four hundred fifty dollars. The batteries were seventy five a piece. And the charge controller was around fifty dollars, so it's pretty. pretty What's the output of the panel? It's one hundred and twenty watts. Yeah. Thank you.